what about you? Today we're going to talk about some lawn care tips for June and some what you should do and what you shouldn't do. So stick around. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the do's and the don'ts for June. What you should be thinking about and what to do to get the most out of your lawn this month. So this is a new series I'm starting now. Before we get into it guys, if you want to get more out of your lawn this year, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe for more videos like this. I post a lot of videos on lawn care and how to get the most out of your lawn. So just go ahead, smash that big red button down there and we'll get on with the show. So for my first tip, I'm going to say, doesn't matter what you're cutting with, we have a few different lawnmowers here. We'll have the John Deere cylinder mower. That lets us cut between five and 20 mil for a nice cut. We have the heater. That's going to leave a lovely finish. It's got a roller in the back. We're going to be cutting, probably going to be cutting between 20 and 50 mil. We'll have our garden care lawnmower. Pretty basic. Going to leave a reasonably finished, but again, key to having a good lawn is taking 30%, not reducing your lawn any more than 30%. So what does that mean? Regular mowing, once a week. If you're fertilizing your lawn, you might be cutting more often. In June, and if you're fertilizing your lawn, you're, to get the optimum results, you're gonna be cutting more often. This lawn, we're currently cutting two to three times a week. So a lot of you guys, a lot of people will be asking me about aerating now. I would say you can air it all somewhere long, but what I would say is I wouldn't be doing any hollow core aeration because during the summer the ground gets really dry. But if you're going to air it, I would say just focus your efforts in and around places that get a lot of wear. Now, if you don't have any aerators, we've covered this before in future videos, you can obviously use a drill, also use a fork. So just in and around your clothesline or where you walk on and off the lawn, that's where it focused my efforts just doing localized aerating in some spots. So this, er this area here is a high traffic area because this is the only access point onto the lawn where we're bringing the machines on and most of the time we're walking onto the lawn, we're walking onto here. It's also the area that's unsurprisingly that will have the most weed grass on. I've covered weed grass a lot on other videos. If you want, I'll leave a link down in the comments below. But the weed grass has really come in here as this is the weakest part of the lawn because it's always under the most stress. So the best way to combat this is with the aeration. Now what I would suggest guys, if you're going to be using a drill to drill your lawn, maybe think about getting a longer drill bit and it's not going to be a sore in your back. So that's just what I'd suggest. I have a couple of quick tips to show you and then I'm going to show you something more technical. Another simple tip is if you have any garden furniture. Move it around so as you're spreading the wear and you're letting the light in underneath from wherever it's going, whether it be a seat or a trampoline or just anything else that you're going to have in your garden during the summer. Next up we'll have some weeds. Now I'm very fortunate not to have too many weeds in this lawn. This is a new lawn and we don't really we don't have any weeds. We have some weed grasses. Now, if you just have a few weeds, the best thing to do is just take a pen knife and to cut them out and the seed. So I'm going to show you that now. We'll have a wee bucket, some seed mixed up. We always 
keep a wee bit of this. If you store this in a cool, dry place, then it's not gonna go off on you. So anytime you take a hole out of the lawn, just put it back in. Now, for hard to shift weeds, or if you have a lot of weeds, a product like this is very good. Spread on, weeds are dead. Now, just while we're talking about weed killers, I'd like to say I'm against 4-in-1 weed killers, because you're or four in one products where there's weed control in that fertilizer because you're going to be covering all your lawn in weed killer and i don't think that's helpful the the least amount of weed killer and products like this we can put on our lawns the more healthy your lawn's going to be so this is my final tip for my june lawn care calendar now if we are lucky enough to have a prolonged dry spell, I recommend that you only water your lawn a couple of times a week at most. The reason for that, you want to soak the water well down into the lawn. Watering every night lead to more weed grasses because they have the shallow roots and you're going to have more weeds in your lawn. You want to always encourage the grass to grow deep down into the soil. If you want to get the most out of your water, there's products we're going to use called wetting agents. And wetting agents break up the surface tension of the water, much like fairy liquid works now you don't want to use fairy liquid in your lawn because that's a detergent and you don't want to be covering your lawn and in all detergent because you're going to wipe out the soil microbes that we're always trying to encourage with the seaweed and the humic acids and all the organic products we're putting on so today we're going to be using this stuff here i picked this up off amazon so i'll leave an affiliate link down in the video description if you want to get some of this now what do you do with this here we'll mix this here up and it's really good to mix up with our seaweed and any fertilizer we're putting on because it's going to help it actually stick to the plant because you can use it as a sticker as well which is really good so i'm going to show you we're going to mix some of this up so let's get on with that now so whenever you're using new products or products that you haven't used before it's advisable to do a bucket test or a jar test get all the products a very small amount of the products you're going to be using put them all in a container mix them up and make sure that they work. Not all chemicals go together, not all products go together, and sometimes they can conceal and block up your spare. So we're gonna do that now. All right, so pretty happy with that. It hasn't congealed in any way, so we're gonna decant this into our spare. So we'll do that now. To explain to you what wetting agent does, we're going to try a real quick test here. So, we'll have a watering can, we'll have some peat. Now hopefully this peat's going to be dry enough that whenever we pour the water on it, it's just going to run off. And this will show you what a hydrophobic soil is. So, this is actually after a couple of, couple of minutes. You can see the water is all still sitting on the surface, so it's taking a lot longer to get down in. This way, we have some wet agent in our watering can here. We're going to mix it through and see how quick it passes through. So let's get on with that. So you can see there that it soaks right in, no bother at all. The, the peat is properly wet with a wetting agent in it. 